Have you ever looked at your Switch and thought, man, I really need, I need a keyboard for this thing? Yeah, me neither. But that doesn't mean people aren't going to be making keyboards for the Switch for whatever reason, especially branded ones. I have two here, actually, and I haven't really done much with them yet. I figured we would check them out here together on camera. Now, I'm going to tell you the prices of them, and then we'll go through it and we'll see if they are worth buying, considering pretty much any USB keyboard, I believe, works with the Switch when you have it in dock mode. Otherwise, you need a little adapter to go USB-C to USB Type-A input. So, we have two different ones. We have one from Cyber Gadget that is, and I'm not even kidding, $35. And then we have one here, uh, new type, Armor 3 for the Switch, and this one is $25. So, eh. Two different prices here, ten dollars more for this guy, and I looked over the boxes. I don't, I don't think they're that different. You might think because, of course, these are set up so that the Joy-Con controllers will slide into the sides, that they are wireless in some way, and they're they're not. They are wired completely, and it seems like they're basically just keyboards with slots on the sides, but I figure we'll open up and we'll find out for ourselves. I also have the Switch and I have an adapter so we can use it in uh, handheld mode rather than dock mode. Most people who use keyboards will just plug the USB input uh, of, or the USB cable, of course, into the input on the side of the dock, but we're just gonna go from the USB-C on the bottom of the Switch to USB uh, Type-A input, and that's how we'll kind of use it here in handheld mode, just, just for this. So I guess we'll start with the more expensive one. This is the Cyber Switch, and it had a lot of tape on it. It actually got here pretty quick as well because it did ship from Amazon, so prime shipping. I got here in like a day or two, and everything on it is in Japanese, so it is basically an imported accessory for the Switch. So we'll go ahead and pop this guy open. Very small keyboard right away, right? Like it's it's not a big keyboard. This is it's not much with it either. It's just basically the box and a keyboard. No instructions or anything. I mean, I guess you don't really need a lot when it comes to uh, a keyboard. However, this is interesting because of course it has the railings on the side. And I have a feeling there's no actual communication going on between the keyboard and the Joy-Con controllers, which is a shame because I'm looking at it now and there does not appear to be anything like down here, like there's no like connection or anything. So I have of course some Joy-Con controller. So let's see how these things actually look when they're connected and how they feel. I mean, they click in well. I mean, they have slight movement that you can see there, but you hear it really click and it grips it well. So that's good. I guess at this point I basically have that, uh... oh, it has a little, little window there of course for it as well. Uh, I guess I, I kind of feel like I have that that GameCube keyboard. If, if you're not, if you don't want to talk about, there was a GameCube controller that was, uh, <laughs> it was really funny. It was a massive keyboard that looked very similar to this with analog sticks on the side and everything. Uh, it's, it's almost flush on the bottom. And I guess, can you lay it down? No, see this actually gets in the way. So the padding on the back is not deep enough, so you can't actually like set it down because these will rub on the bottom. So this would be something you would hold the entire way unless you need to type, I guess, because I can't quite reach. I mean, it's, it's hard to do that. So I guess you'd put it down, type some stuff out, and then you would pick this back up. And of course it is wired. Again, no communications going on between the the two Joy-Con the Joy-Con controllers and the keyboard it appears. Oof, that cord. Okay. So the cord isn't super long. I would say that is I'm gonna say it's five feet and that might be generous. So it's like a five foot cable. I do, I think it is really funny though to be holding a keyboard like this, just like <laughs> I mean it looks like from the back, if you don't have if you don't have this cable, it looks like you're holding a switch almost but it's the keyboard, I think that's kind of funny. Again, this is $35, and I think the only benefit from what I see here is that it holds your Joy-Con controllers. However, you would still put your Joy-Con controllers, I guess, down technically to then type. So there's not like that I can see a massive advantage from having this keyboard as opposed to just a regular one. These, I think, are just accessories that they are taking advantage of the Switch branding and, of course, the little spot for your Joy-Con controllers, but this of course is the more expensive one and it's not wireless. So let's see what the new type looks like, right? A keyboard that is $10 cheaper. Also has the same ability to 
hold your Joy-Con controllers on there and plugs in through USB. Also says it works with PlayStation 4, PC, and Mac. And the reason for that is yes, because it's basically just a USB keyboard. Wow, okay. This one comes with instructions. Which is a little thing, but it actually puts it technically ahead of that one. Uh, it just says, yeah, Joy-Con's not included, okay, and just explains that railing, indicator light, all of that. So yeah, no actual, again, no actual um, communication, which is a shame because what it should be doing is when you have this plugged in, it should be charging your Joy-Con controllers, right? I mean, we can check that, but if it's not gonna communicate, it might as well at least charge your Joy-Con controllers. This cable seems a lot longer. It is, wow, okay, yeah, this is, this is quite a bit longer, actually. I wonder if it actually says how long it is on the back. Because I'm looking at this, and this is this is a 10-foot cable. This is legitimately twice as long as this cable. This one's 35, this one's 25. So far, the $25 one is, uh, is better. But uh, again, you can just use any keyboard. <laughs> However, I, I do like the idea of a keyboard that the Joy-Con controllers can slide into. I think that's an interesting idea. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and pop these guys on here, see if we get a nice similar click. They look similar, but they're not exact, obviously. This one also has a nice little home button there, which is cool. I'm looking over like kind of the, I guess the layouts that they have set up here. Let me pull these over here. Just kind of the layouts, and we have a home button. This one doesn't necessarily have a big home indicator there. They feel the, they feel pretty much the same. Uh, buttons are all in the same place. I think they're basically the same keyboard, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it clicks in very similar as well. Yep. So these are, yeah, they're basically the same keyboard. So unfortunately, like I said, no major differences between them. Again, 25, 35, obviously the $25 one so far is the one to get. Let's hook them up to the Switch. All right, let's see, let's see what we get out of this. So if for whatever reason you wanna hook up a USB type A or something to your Switch when it's in handheld mode, you just need an adapter, USB-C to uh, type A. And you can find these, I think even like Walmart and Best Buys and stuff will carry them, but you can also get them on Amazon fairly cheap. Uh, they. Uh, like Best Buy and stuff, they they overcharge for them, I think. I, I think they charge way too much. You can usually find one of these for like 10, 15 bucks on Amazon, whereas they might charge you like $30 for one of these things in a Walmart or a Best Buy or a Target or something. So just a heads up there. But let's plug in uh, our cable and our keyboard here. And I guess let's uh, let's see how all this works out. So once you make your way into like the eShop, for example, as I have it pulled up here, the keyboard will start to work and everything. Uh, you can navigate around with it. And let's just see, I mean, it seems like everything here works fine. As you'd expect, it's, it's a standard USB keyboard. So if we go in here and we type up what we have, Doom, I guess, we'll search for Doom. And then we can go to, I wonder if Enter will just, yeah, it's Enter just is basically plus. And uh, yeah, so we'll bring up Doom and you can just kind of leaf through with that pretty easily. And people are gonna wonder what's the point of the keyboard, obviously, because look what I'm doing here. I could just be using the Joy-Con. I could be using the touch screen. Uh, the idea of the keyboard specifically, and the reason it's sold in Japan is because there are MMOs right now on the Switch that are in Japan, but not in, in uh, like the US, for example. Like games uh, like Fantasy Star, I believe there's a Dragon Quest game, and a lot of the time, of course, you might wanna type something out without having to use your controller. You might just wanna sit down and use a keyboard, and I assume these are pretty much in place so that you can, you don't have to like grab a keyboard while you're using your Joy-Con controllers. You can just kind of be playing. And then when you need to set it down, you just type it out and pick it right back up. I think that's what they were aiming for, but I don't, I don't think this is a great implementation of it. There's not enough benefits for the price, to be honest. It's just I, like, I picked this up and I'd rather be, you know, using the Joy-Con controllers. To, uh, to, to navigate around. Uh, as for, so when you go into the menu, as you can see, I lose control of the keyboard. It doesn't actually work anymore. I think if I go into settings, it might come back. It does not. Let me actually go down, because I don't think it, it doesn't detect 
anything with the keyboard, unless it's like in an application like the eShop, for example. Uh, basically any field where it goes and defaults to you having to type in a name or something, that's where the keyboard will start working and it's just, this doesn't seem like, it seems like such a weird thing to do. I would basically say that for now anyway, it's a waste of money to, to buy these. This is just like flat out waste of money. 35 and 25, uh, it's, uh, well, 35 and 25. The $35 one's definitely a waste of money. I don't know why you would buy that. Uh, unless we get an MMO here that uh, would, would make sense for one of these, but then you can just use any keyboard you want that plugs in through USB. I mean, you can see the stuff I'm going through here to get it to work through handheld mode. Most likely, handheld mode, you're not gonna set the whole switch down to use a keyboard. It'll just be used in dock mode, and by at that point, you've probably already settled in, and it's not wireless. So, here's how they could make this better. A wireless keyboard that uses the Joy-Con controllers with communication so that everything runs together, right? And it maybe has like a, I don't know, a touchpad or something on it as well. Uh, and that way it syncs up. It, you don't have to worry about it actually plugging into the system. And that way you can play your MMOs on the couch this way. That makes the most sense, I think. Or a very small, small little uh, keypad like the uh, Xbox 360 had. I used that a lot back in the day when we type out messages on uh, the Xbox 360 and Halo all the time. Those are probably your best bets. These keyboards, which are basically the same, by the way, uh, pretty much almost exactly the same, yes, uh, are not needed. So they're on Amazon. I wouldn't recommend picking them up. Doesn't seem to make sense, but people were curious about them. They asked me about them, and I finally got around to picking a few up just to check them out. And uh, well, that's what we have here is seemingly wasted money with keyboards. But let me know what you guys think about the keyboards down below. Um, there's really no point in taking these apart because they're just plastic shells with uh, with like keypad membrane and everything and they're exactly the same it seems. So if there was some sort of Joy-Con communication going on, I would be actually pretty interested in opening these up, but there's really, there's really no need to do so. It's just a little mold on the side with a plastic rail. It's not even using metal. So there's there's another thing there. It probably will wear over time. But yes, let me know what you guys think about the uh, the keyboards for the Nintendo Switch down below. I'm curious. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video if you liked it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you in the next video.